bride looking radiant. And there is the kiss that everyone was hoping for and waiting for. Well, that was a service and a half, wasn't it? Well, <laughs> you took the words right out of my mouth and what an exquisite scene. We see them coming down the west steps, the step liners there, the magnificent floral displays behind. And we saw just a glint of that utterly divine tiara, Queen Mary's diamond bandeau tiara from 1932, the central brooch dating from 1893. We were talking about the dress quite a lot this morning and what a dress it's proved to be, Dermot. What do you make of it? Well, listen, I mean, I'm slightly outside my comfort zone here <laughs> with, my, with my esteemed company, but she just looks stunning and happy. And I mean, I thought the, I thought the Page boys in particular did a great job, the Marooney boys all the way out there. Joe, it wasn't what you expected. What, what are your thoughts? Well, I think it was, it, it's absolutely genius as a dress, actually, in that it really, it, it completely complements her style that we know her for in every day, but it's got the real pure romance about it as well that's perfectly regal for a wedding. It's gorgeous. And we are seeing members of the oh, royal party Charlotte. there, not just the utterly divine bridesmaid, there's little Princess Charlotte, but also, take a look around, Charlotte. What a day this is, her mother, the Duchess of Cambridge, is saying. In just a few short weeks since the Duchess of Cambridge herself gave birth, but there she is looking splendid. And Doria Ragland, who, as Sheikhu Kanye Mason was playing the cello, seemed to be having a few quiet thoughts to herself inside the choir. But now there she is with her extended family, the Prince of Wales, having a few words with her there. It could not be a more beautiful day here at Windsor. So the carriage is ready. Prince Harry makes his way in and helps his new wife into this Ascot Landau that they've chosen for this carriage procession. A lovely open carriage, perfect for today, giving everyone a very good look at the young couple as they make their way through the streets of Windsor and then back to the castle on the long walk. It's going to be a lovely procession. Roy Anika and Robert Hardman still with me. We've been enjoying the service, and now we're going to enjoy these <laughs> scenes as well. And I have to say, Robert, at this point, they look remarkably happy and relaxed, given that they've been through, you know, what for both of them is one of life's great milestones. They have, Hugh, and, you know, it, it, all, all, the, all the stresses and nerves beforehand, it's all over now, and it, it, you just you can hear the roars of the crowd echoing in from outside the ramparts. Here they are coming out of the horseshoe cloister into the lower ward of the castle. There's going to be another roar now. There's thousands of uh, representatives of all their charities welcome them out here as the winds are great. National anthem being played for the new couple to make their way through the lower ward and then they go up towards the great round tower of Windsor Castle past St George's Chapel there and waving to the 2,000 or more people who were specially invited and included um, in this lovely event today and of course watched keenly by smiling members of the royal family including the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh who's here today after just a month after some surgery on his hip so people are very pleased that he was able to make it for this event but look at the waves and look at the smiles and really Robert the relief yes the, the relief here it's rather sweet there to see the uh, see the the royal family in the role of, of standing by the side of the road waving rather than being in the procession absolutely uh, just such amazingly lovely scenes um, to see them together and this of course is the start of that really rather wonderful pomp and pageantry moment we're going to see with the mounted escort at the household cavalry and th this is going to be shortly the first time that members of the public outside the castle walls the, the definitely more than 100,000 that was estimated who've come out to see them get a chance to see the new duke and duchess of sussex for the first time and what a lovely sight that will be and i should think the roars that we will hear as they come up around the streets of windsor and finally up the long walk will be quite amazing
they'll just go into the eastern end of the castle where they'll disappear for a few moments and then I expect Her Majesty the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh to be leaving. More people leaving the uh, chapel itself, including the mother of the bride. And that's been, for her, a pretty intense and emotional moment. Extraordinary. She was. She looked remarkably composed the whole way through. Really emotional as she understandably saw her daughter arrive. Very soon the Queen will be leaving St George's Chapel and the national anthem will be played to signal the Queen's departure. Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh making their way back to the eastern end of Windsor Castle. That's where Her Majesty's private apartments are. That's where she spends so much of her time. Um, and that's where, of course, we get the sense of the fact that she loves Windsor probably more than anywhere else. And who can disagree with that, given the fact that it is a place that has a thousand years of royal history attached to it. But here we are. The wonderful carriage procession underway and the young couple preparing to greet the crowds on the streets of Windsor. We're just seeing on the on the top of the round tower over to the right there, Hugh, the largest of all the very large royal standards. The biggest one in the cupboard has come out today. It really is magnificent. It's almost a, a hazard to air traffic. It's so big. Such wonderful scenes. These are, of course, the... Uh the horses from the Royal Mews who are pulling the carriage. Shortly they'll be joined by the mounted escort of the Household Cavalry and I think it will be so, so lovely to see the interaction actually between Harry and Meghan there. They're, they're seeing, they'll be seeing the crowds for the first time that have gathered to see them. The Windsor Grey Horses, specially Wind selected for the procession today, the ones who are going to be on their best behaviour, but also, of course, the ones that look really magnificent. Everything has been prepared in great detail for this procession. It last probably the best part of half an hour, but every inch of this procession has been planned. It and you're going to see something, you know, not just the colour, not just the style, not just the pageantry, but it's going to be an impressive show for the world to see. It is a symbol, if you like, of military precision, but also the kind of, I suppose, the ceremonial flair that the British bring to these things. They do. I mean, we see occasions like this well, sometimes when the Queen welcomes world leaders here for state visits. Uh, there's, a, there's a comparable show uh, as the, uh, uh, the procession will come up to the castle. What we're going to see, though, is, is really unlike anything. It's the, going to be the longest, I think, uh, uh, procession through the streets of Windsor um, we've seen in a very long time. And he mentioned the extraordinary training and, and precision that goes into this. These horses have actually have special training to, to cope and prepare them for the crowds they're going to see. And here they have, they actually, I'm told, they have earmuffs in their earplugs in their ears to help them cope with the noise of the crowds. And what will be lovely for this mounted escort to see is to see the groom in his household cavalry blues and royals uniform. I think that will make them feel especially proud to be escorting them. By our bandstand, uh, passing the Victoria Monument down Castle Hill, turning left up the high street to raptures of uh, fans, a welcome here, such a warm welcome. Household cavalry coming down and a new Duke and Duchess of Sussex. It really is quite a sight indeed, Dermot, and there is a wonderful fusion here of significant British pageantry matched with the rather charming small-scale streets of Windsor, which are just sparkling today with these beautiful 
Union flag banners, and indeed you may see at some point in the procession route, there's a thousand metres of bunting that has been made by the tiny busy hands of the school children of Windsor and many other kids from around Berkshire. So we're seeing a lovely uniting of some rather handmade casual moments and some very proper British moments. Estimates today that around about 120,000 people would amass in and around Windsor. And I have to say, I think it is going to be, in the final count, many, many more thousands than that. The Windsor Greys doing their job well, not being put off by the uh, cheers and the waving of the flags. And there we get a glimpse, a glimpse of the bride and the groom. So the carriage procession on its way through the heart of the town of Windsor. A word about the travelling escort because, you know, it's always a great sight. The House of Cavalry, they really are so impressive on all occasions. So we have um, two officers and uh, 24 soldiers involved in the travelling escort. Um, commanding officer, Lieutenant Colonel James Gaisley, uh, commanding the travelling escort for the entire procession. He's been commanding officer of the House of Cavalry Mounted Regiment since December of 2015. He's riding very near the carriage, um, I think probably on the right-hand side as we as we look. So that's James uh, Gaisley. And then we have the last couple of horse, Frankie O'Leary. We spoke to Frank yesterday about uh, today's escort duties. Um, he served on several tours of... Uh, of um, Afghanistan and uh, he's been on several tours abroad with the lifeguards um, since 2002. A couple of tours of Afghanistan I think and I think he actually served as a radio operator in Prince Harry's troop. So lots of personal links here today, some of which are not so obvious but it's worth just underlining how much thought has gone into this procession as well. Absolutely. Um, it's wonderful to see the mounted escort that has a cavalry. There's actually, Hugh, another really lovely personal link between the commanding officer, James Gaisley, and Harry. Um, his sister, Sarah Jane Gaisley, was actually a bridesmaid at Charles and Diana's wedding, and his father, Nick Gaisley, a very famous um, National Hunt racing trainer, trained the Prince of Wales as a young jockey. So, um, a wonderful personal link there, but fantastic to see the House of Cavalry Mounted Regiment doing their thing, doing what they do best, that pomp and pageantry makes makes us feel very proud, doesn't it? Certainly does, as they come past uh, Victoria Barracks there. Colonel Gaisley, of course, was uh, riding the same horse this time last week at the Royal Windsor Horse Show. He's actually competing in the show jumping in front of the Queen, so uh, um, <laughs> they've, they've seen quite a lot of him lately. Interesting, the Victoria Barracks, which are on the left there, they look quite modern, don't they? But there's been a, um, a military barracks there since, I think, the 18th century, at least the end of the 18th century, um, but of course much enlarged now, um, and it's where lots of the, foot, the five guards regiments come to stay at Victoria Barracks in turn. I think yes, they take their turn now. They rotate to to change the guard at Windsor Castle, and now it's the whole procession coming down Sheep Street into King's Road, where. I walked down there yesterday, everyone's been working very hard on their gardens, very hard on their bunting. <laughs> I think you'll see a lot of stars and stripes as well, uh, which is a very nice touch. Um, and a lot of Canadian maple leaves as well. Uh, Canadians are certainly very keen to uh, claim the bride as well. And the Commonwealth was a very big theme, not only in the, um, the bride's wedding dress and her veil, she had every single flower of the Commonwealth, all 53 floral emblems of the Commonwealth embroidered onto her veil, which is a lovely touch. I think it's probably why the, the veil was so long. They had to incorporate <laughs> every nation of the Commonwealth. Um, and it's a very nice touch. It's slightly redolent of the Queen's coronation gown. That had all the emblems of the Commonwealth. But of course, in those days, the Commonwealth only had eight nations. Today, it's got 53. Some 250 members of the armed forces um, serving today in various ceremonial roles. Uh, lots of them with links to Prince Harry. Um, the Irish Guards, very prominent today because 1st Battalion Irish Guards have been uh, on duty and indeed we have the wonderful musicians of the uh, Irish Guards band as well performing for us uh, here at Windsor Castle um, and they've been hard at work all day as well. So lots of individual members and then different serving groups and regiments involved too, all of them selected for their links. All the services involved, uh, street lights. People have made a huge effort, a huge effort to decorate their homes. Um, 
lots of them. Indeed, we were just here two or three days ago, and people were preparing at that point when, you know, frankly, the town was not so busy, um, but they were determined to have a great day. Time and again, Roya and uh, Robert, people were talking about the weather, and, you know, there's always a bit of a gamble in May in the United Kingdom with weather. This has been a gamble that's paid off very handsomely. Uh, and now what we're seeing on the procession is just completing the kind of rotation around some of these streets around the centre of town before, of course, eventually we'll get to the most spectacular part of all, which is the long walk through Windsor Great Park. We saw the car earlier speeding through. <laughs> this will be a very different experience, and of course with the Household Cavalry in attendance providing the escort, it's going to be one of the most memorable images of the day, without any question. Absolutely, it's going to be a, an utterly spectacular sight, and I think, Hugh, you mentioned there have been um, you know, a few glitches. I think the couple will be extremely relieved. The only non-glitch is the weather. Windsor could not look more stunning. This is exactly the picture of Windsor, of Great Britain, that we want to be seeing at the moment, don't we? The Queen's Gardener did say you could not have picked a better time uh, than May for a wedding. All the park, all the parks, the whole castle is at its absolute best. And when the weather's like this, it is going to be the most fabulous global picture of Britain. And as we can already see, people are on one side, <laughs> one side of the road. They're going to, in a minute, they're going to charge all the way across to the other, That's right. uh, into the park, so they get a second look of the couple coming back the other way. But these crowds, I mean, we were expecting big crowds, but I think these really have exceeded all expectations. There is absolutely no room on those pavements for any more people. Thames Valley Police, of course, are working hard as well in Windsor. Let's give them the credit they're due. And I, I would like at this point just to acknowledge um, those members of the armed forces who are streetlining, because that is a pretty arduous duty on a day like today when the temperature is so high. Royal Navy Small Ships and Diving, um, Prince Harry appointed Commodore-in-Chief of Small Ships and Diving by the Queen uh, a couple of years ago. The Royal Marines, let's not forget that Harry was appointed Captain General of the Marines in December of last year. Um, taking over from the Duke of Edinburgh, who would held that title, by the way, for 64 years. So that's very much a rich family heritage. Um, the Army Air Corps, they are taking part today, the Royal Gurkha Rifles. We saw two Gurkha officers, by the way, on the uh, steps of St George's Chapel earlier, um, opening the doors for some of the cars arriving. First Battalion Irish Guards, I've already mentioned them, and RAF Honington too, because Prince Harry was appointed uh, Honorary Air Commandant of uh, RAF Honington in October 2008, a decade ago by the Queen. So just to underline, you know, they're all here for a reason, yes? It's not by accident. They're all here because they have a personal bond with Prince Harry today. Prince Harry has often talked so, so movingly about how his 10 years serving in the armed forces shaped him. And it's so, I mean, for that reason, it's so wonderful to see so many of the regiments he's closely linked with here today. Just looking at them now, you know, happy and taking in all the kind of enjoyment of the day. And I think it's normal as well, Roya and uh, Robert, at this point, as we see them here, newly married couple, ready to embark on this fantastic journey back to Windsor Castle and the reception that will take place in a short while, a reception hosted by Her Majesty the Queen. There'll be a private reception, by the way, later this evening at Frogmore. But as we look at them now, just a thought from both of you two about the kind of lives that they plan to lead, the kind of things they intend to do. What can we say with confidence already about what they want to achieve and the kind of places they want to go to? Well, well, we... As they made very clear in their, in their in interview when they were engaged, they do see their future very strongly uh, within the Commonwealth. Prince Harry is going to be a, a Commonwealth, the Commonwealth Youth Ambassador. Uh, just as they turn there onto the long walk for the, the beginning of, of what really is the, the centerpiece of this procession. And I think the Commonwealth, uh, it, it, we've seen uh, touches of it all through the service. It's just going to be an extremely important part of their lives. I think we'll see them travelling a lot through the Commonwealth. We don't know where the honeymoon is. I'd uh, put an awful lot on the fact it's going to be somewhere in the Commonwealth. And, and that is definitely part of part of their, their future well we know as well that they are literally going to hit the ground running and while they um, as soon as they're back from their honeymoon um, it, they are going to be doing quite a lot of uh, travel we think there's possibly a, a trip to uh, Dublin um, being considered maybe the Netherlands too and then of course in the autumn they will embark on a big Commonwealth tour to Australia for the Invictus Games 
possibly also to New Zealand, Fiji and Tonga. So I think absolutely reinvigorating the Commonwealth, as you said, and, and what it means to young people will be high on their agenda, Hugh. Travelling escort, leading the carriage right along. The long walk, which is in the heart of Windsor Great Park, and this really is the highlight of this procession. Let's join Dermot and Kirsty again. It really is, and that shot we can see coming down the long wall, all 2.65 miles of it, <laughs> is pretty spectacular, isn't it? That aerial, look at that. And the, the sight of what I can only describe as the natural grace of the Duchess of Sussex as she sits in this open Ascot Landau with the uh, beautiful Windsor Greys. One getting a little bit frisky a moment ago, but it's back in line. <laughs> and there she is waving entirely it seems at home which is quite something because this today is quite a crowd uh, at the end of this they'll uh, they'll go through cambridge gate we saw earlier on uh, the duchess of sussex may be the second person to call her that <laughs> <laughs> uh, the carriage will go through uh, and reach the castle's private grounds they'll then go into the reception uh, after photographs. Uh, now, the photographs are interesting. We know that uh, uh, Alexei Lubomirsky, mm -hmm. who we spoke to yesterday, he usually takes front covers of Vogue. He's usually taking snapshots of uh, people like Gwyneth Paltrow, great big movie stars, Beyonce. But today, he will be taking six official photographs of the royal party, including all those, I have to say, astonishingly well-behaved flower girls and page boys who helped the royal couple onto the west steps of St George's Chapel today. The crowd made up of so many people who've come out on, we reckon it's about 21 degrees with a light breeze here in Windsor. And when uh, Harry's parents got married back in 1981, it was a scorching 24 degrees. So we're lucky today, <laughs> a very decent 21. And after all this, I imagine they'll have some sort of appetite. Um, so the Queen will host the reception in St George's Hall in Windsor Castle for the, uh, the couple and the guests of the congregation. Um, the chief or head chef of the royal household is Mark Flanagan, and the main focus of the food will be that in season. For the most part, food coming from Kent, the Garden of England, of course, and Norfolk as well. And then there's the cake. There's been a lot of chat about the cake. The cake is it's elderflower, and is it lemon, lemon. Dermot? It is. I think that's what they said. We saw a beautiful um, pepper tap. Great big crates of Sicilian lemons on the Instagram account of Claire Patek, who is making the cake. And there they are waving, and is it just me or are the cheers getting louder? <laughs> Quite a moment. And Meghan Markle, of course, is somebody who is used to being composed. It's part of the job of an actress to perform, but here this is a very different role. This is a woman who seems very natural, very connected, not acting her way through a huge event, which she might reasonably have been expected to do. But for every moment of the service, and now as she sits by her husband, she is beaming with a smile and taking in what is surely the view of a lifetime. Can we take a moment as well just to talk uh, about her entrance into the chapel? In, into the nave where she was on her own. That was, that was quite something, wasn't it? That was a remarkable thing, and I think it takes a great deal of self-possession and composure at a moment when maybe more than ever you want an arm to lean on. Mm. And in the days that have led up to this magnificent day, she's not had her troubles to seek. The fact that her father was unable to come due to his health meant that she had to make the decision. How was she going to enter the chapel? How was she going to meet the man who was about to become her husband? And she chose to do it on her own with those seven-year-old twins holding her train. They did a good job of that. And yeah, the composure that it took Dermot is quite something. But she had it. She did. And as the world watches Windsor today, we reckon a worldwide audience of uh, 1.9, maybe we'll be nudging 2 billion. I think Britain's showing its best face. The sun is out, not a cloud in the sky. And these people, of course, on the long walk, some of whom have been there since Thursday, many of whom have come today in through the train station. And this is the sight they've been waiting to see. The 
the crowds come to an end on the long walk and then it is the private garden that the royal couple will move into. The cheers will be just a distant sound and maybe they'll have a few moments to enjoy just each other's company before it's time for photos and then time to greet the 600 odd guests. who witnessed a service like no other royal wedding. And as the royal couple almost make their way up to Cambridge Gate, let's see what the atmosphere is like right down there on the long walk with Alex. <laughs> and well, she might take yeah, a moment, absolutely. damn it. Well, Good she clutch. might take a moment. <laughs> I think they might, I mean, who knows what they're saying to each other, that's private and entirely between them, but I think they might both take a moment to congratulate each other on getting through what is essentially an intensely private moment under such scrutiny. As Harry walked down to St George's Chapel earlier today, just after 11 o'clock, I did think he had the look of a slightly nervous groom about him, but not anymore. The smile is broad, the wave is confident. He got his gal. He died. Looks a very happy man though, doesn't he? And the role of the military today is so personal to Harry, as we know, he's seen two tours of Afghanistan. There are 250 members of the armed services who are involved in making sure that this splendid bit of pageantry is all it should be. And they are many of them oh, servicemen that, that, uh, that Harry knows well and has served with. What a shot. 